Hello and welcome to another edition of Paul.com TV. My name is John Strand and today we're going to be looking at scanning through Tor networks. In particular we're going to be talking about right ways and wrong ways to do it. A couple quick notes before you get started. In order to get everything set up and working tonight, uh, if you wanted to play along, I'm using Ubuntu Jaunty. Of course it looks like I'm not using Ubuntu Jaunty. I'm actually SSH'd into the box and using my Mac. Um, you're going to need to have that installed, you're going to need to have Tor installed, you're going to need to have Provoxy installed, and you're going to need to have uh, Proxy Chains installed and ready to go. Um, finally, what you're also, the final piece that you're going to need to have is you're going to need to have this wonderful tool here called Tor Tunnel by Moxie Marlin Spike. Um, so if you look at this, this is a tool that Moxie has written so he could go through and scan Tor networks. Um, in particular, he was using it to see if anybody was using SSL strip on, uh, on a Tor network. But the coolest thing about this particular tool is instead of going through the entire Tor network, let's say going through the standard three hops that you would normally go through, it jumps you straight to an exit node. So what you can do is you can fire up this tool, and then scan through it, and rather than going through every single one of the hops, to try to make it completely anonymous, you just jump straight to an exit node and you continue scanning. This is particularly useful to a penetration tester, mainly because we go up against environments on a very regular basis where they use dynamic shunning. I'm like, well, yeah, you can run Nmap, you can run Nessus, we're going to block you. That's fine, that's perfectly cool, I think that's legitimate. However, I don't believe that that's a completely wonderful uh, defense, as many people make it out to be. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about how we can set up disposable IP addresses for your pen test. Now, a couple quick notes. It's still not wicked, wicked, wicked fast, but it's faster than simply going through and jumping through a Tor network. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple quick changes that I did. First, you have to make proxy chains and provoxy work going through Tor Tunnel. So I've got my proxy chains config and I'm going to jump right down to a configuration setting. You can see here that I changed the line SOX5 so instead of saying SOX4 like it does here where it says SOX4 127.0.0.1 I'm going to go through and I'm going to set it up to SOX5 at 127.0.0.1 and listening on port 5060 because that's the port that Tor Tunnel is going to be listening on. So that's one little change that you're going to have to make. Um, the other one that you're going to have to make, oops, oops, there we go. Q. Excellent. The next change that you're going to make is you're going to have to go through and make a change to your um, you're going to have to make a change to your Provoxy config. Um, the reason why you need to do this is you will need to go through and set this up so that you can surf to your target network utilizing your one hop Tor network. And here you can see I just basically commented out the default line forward SOX 4A and I basically replaced that with forward SOX 5. Now working through different types of Tor nodes and different types of Tor networks you can set it to different authentications or different uh, different SOX versions but for what I'm doing tonight I'm setting it to SOX 5. So I add that line in and now I should be ready to go. Go ahead and cue that out. There we go. So now we've got our Provoxy config, we've got our Proxy Chains config, they're all set and they're ready to go through Tor, uh, through Tor Proxy. However, let's jump down real quick and let's see if we can find any Tor networks. Now, Moxie on his website was nice enough to actually give us a direct link. Here we go, thoughtcrime.org software Tor Tunnel, to where we could jump in and take a look at the directory. Now, the systems that you're going to be looking for are systems that have a status of exit, stable, fast, and valid. So like for example, this one right here, you can see it's exit, fast, named, running, and it's valid. That's the ones we're looking for. Um, now ideally you could go through and basically scrape out, find a bunch of these IP addresses before you even get started, and it would help your overall scanning much, much, much go faster. Uh, go faster. Mainly because you're going to burn these networks out. As the network goes through, identifies your attacks, they're going to start shunning. But what they're doing is they're going to be shunning your exit nodes, not your real nodes. So now that we have have all that set up. Let's go 